Hey everybody, welcome back to Off the Trail. Now this uh, video is going to be done in a little bit of a reverse. Um, last night during uh, our cookout we were having, I uh, tore this beehive down a little bit, and as you can see, removed the top honey super from it. Uh, what I noticed is that we had had a wax moth invasion, and the hive is very weak at this point. Um, usually when you have a wax moth invasion like that, what that means is that the queen is dead and the hive itself is going to eventually uh, collapse because the bees that are left are basically just going to live out their life cycle. Um, but without having a, a queen in the hive, there will be no new eggs and no new uh, honeybees. But they'll at least last this season, which is good. Um, as you can see, what we did today is I went ahead and pulled the frames out um, and scraped them just with a regular old knife and uh, we made some well actually we claimed the honey that was in the hive uh, at least the honey that was in that uh, honey super there's still honey in the main box that we did not claim uh, that will sustain these bees throughout the rest of the season um, so in the rest of this video actually what you're going to see is what we've already done and uh, you're going to see how the honey was claimed how much honey we got and uh, that's going to be about it that'll probably be about it for this hive uh, next spring we'll start over we'll get another set of uh, package bees and try it again but for now what you're witnessing is the end of a colony uh, unfortunately but these little guys have done quite a fantastic job and we'll uh, let them live out their lives as you can see the ones on the front there are uh, fanning the hive they're trying to cool it off in there a little bit um, but they've done their job and uh, an amazing job they've done so goes the honeybee so goes the rest of humanity enjoy the rest of the video In case you were wondering why we went ahead and put this uh, honey super and all these empty frames back over here by the hive is because the bees will actually recollect the honey that's left over on here and they'll take it back into the main hive. I don't know if I can zoom in here enough to show you that there's actually, we've already started the process for that, uh, reclaiming the honey that was not scraped and is going to be taken back into the main hive box. And again, that'll sustain them through the rest of their life cycle, through the rest of this year. Because, as I've already stated, unfortunately, without a queen in the hive, uh, eventually this hive will uh, collapse through the rest of the season. So, uh, there it is. It's important to keep in mind that this is extremely primitive honey extraction. There are hundreds of different ways to extract honey from a beehive or from the frames themselves, uh, expensive honey extractors, whatever. As you can see, what we did here was took the comb and the honey and the entire uh, mess of it all and wrapped it in cheesecloth, suspended it from actually the top of our bar here over a bowl, and are going to let the honey drain into this bowl for as long as it takes to uh, remove the honey from the uh, comb. There are several layers of cheesecloth here, um, trying to get the highest level of filtration I can at this point, so that I get the purest honey at this point. Now the honey will be further filtered down, you'll see that here in a couple minutes, but this is the first step of the process. The next step is to be sure to squeeze out all the excess honey once you get to a point that you feel that it's drained sufficiently. Um, as you can see here, my wife is squeezing the honey out of the cheesecloth and uh, trying to extract as much as we possibly can so we get the highest level of yield from uh, what little honey we were actually able to recover from that dying colony.
one of the most important things in any type of canning or jarring situation is to sterilize the jars that you're going to use. I'm going to use these jars here and those lids and they're going to be boiled in the pot and uh, make sure that any germs are uh, killed and that the glass and the lids are sterilized sufficiently before we put the honey in the jars themselves. Again, the cheesecloth acted as a very basic filter. Um, here you see that we are straining the honey further. This is the very, I guess you would call this the second, I call it, kind of call it the first, but you could call it the second step in the filtration process. Just trying to remove any other impurities, any uh, bee parts or anything along those lines that you would not want in your jarred honey. So this is the first step in the uh, filtration process after the cheesecloth straining. Uh, just for information, this honey actually went through about five stages of filtration. This is the final stage you see here, getting the absolute purest honey we can possibly get jarred for this winter. Again, sterilization of your jars, your containers that you're going to use to store any type of canned item um, is of vital importance. And here you can see the jars kind of boiling in the uh, big stock pot. Jars are sterilized. Time to put the honey into the jars and begin storing away our supplies for this winter and fall. There you have it. Our total harvest of honey was a little over three pounds, not counting the weight of the jars. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and watching how we jar honey from an unfortunately dying beehive. See you next time.